in 33 years' time, by 2050, the, the central prediction of the GLA intelligence team is sustainable if properly planned for. Across the world, the population of cities are rising. Currently, 54% of the world's population lives in cities. By 2050, that will be 66% of the world's population. Growth per se is not a bad thing. The most important thing is that we properly plan for such growth. This is what I'm doing through my draft strategies, including the London Plan. The London Plan will ensure that we make best use of land through intensification, encouraging a mix of land uses, and through co-locating different uses. My plan sets out how we can do this while also ensuring the protection of our prized green belt and other green and open spaces. Transport's got a vital role to play in delivering good growth, and that's why I've been ambitious by ensuring that by 2041, four in five journeys in London are conducted on foot, by cycle, or using public transport. We also need to fix our broken housing market, as I've just uh, said, and my draft London housing strategy sets up plans how we can uh, do this. I've also got plans in my draft environment strategy about sustainable buildings and ensuring that future buildings are uh, zero carbon homes, uh, as well as ensuring that we can have all non-residential development to be zero carbon from 2019. Uh, and finally, Chair, my draft economic development strategy sets out our ambitions for maximising opportunity for all, including access to education and skills, fear of pay and work practices. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, there does seem to be a slight discrepancy between the data that you uh, have, have given from the uh, London Data Bank and the uh, Office of National Statistics that puts the figure about a half a million higher. But it's still going to be a large population increase. And one of the things I've asked you about before is water. And in an answer to a question, you did say that Thames Water, which provides uh, water to 70% of London's population, does forecast a deficit of 100 million litres per day by 2020, rising to a deficit of 400 million litres per day by 2040. Now, in various committees, we've talked about possible plans to build a reservoir in Oxfordshire. Um, I, I don't know if that's something that's just an aspiration or something that's actually going to take place. Have you got any more information about how we're going to prevent London from having a water deficit in the future? Can I just say, the issue you raise about water shortages is, is one that's uh, at the fore of the minds of many mayors around the world, us included. Uh, Thames do have plans to build a reservoir in, in Oxford. They are plans, not an aspiration. They're also taking steps to address the issue of leakages. You'll be aware of the, of mm. the issue we have of leakages across uh, London. The reality is many of the pipes, the Victorian pipes, not been maintained properly. So in addition to improving the maintenance of the pipes, they have got plans for uh, uh, the reservoir that you talked about. I'm happy to send you the details of the plans, and Thames Water are in advanced stages in relation to that. Okay, thank you. Now, something else I've asked you about, which I, I, I know that you have concerns about as well, is the type of energy which comes to London through the national grid. And I've, I've mentioned it, w the national grid is closing coal power stations and replacing them with burning wood. A and that means that we are uh, chopping down forests in North and South America, turning them into wood pellets, shipping them across the Atlantic and burning them in power stations like Drax and others um, to provide electricity through the national grid, uh, which we'll need more of because you want to turn uh, the city into uh, electric only, eventually, sort of electric only cars, and, and you've got plans for 300 charging points. I, I, I know you said in an answer the increased demand for biomass and its use in this highly energy inefficient way concerns me. It can only add to the pressure on the existing resource and supply chains and has the potential to encourage unscrupulous biomass trading resulting in further deforestation. This, will, this is where London's going to get some of our energy from. Um, what have you done through C4 Cities Network and other contacts you have to counter this use of biomass in our biggest power stations and to prevent deforestation in North and South America? Okay, so, so, Chair, I don't accept a number of the premises made in the question. Yeah. So, so, so I, don't, I don't want my answer to assume that I accept some of the premises made. Uh, but the, uh, the, the, the recently we, we published the draft environmental strategy, which, which brought together six different strategies into uh, one. Um, separately, in relation to C40, you asked the question, I'm, I'm one of the vice chairs of C40, uh, and uh, they're looking at a whole host of issues, including sustainable energies and how we can learn from uh, each other. I'm not sure if it's fair to say, though, that we're increasing reliance on wood-burning fire stations, 
power stations. Well, in fact, it's the other way. Uh, well, in, fact, in fact, we as a country are going far more towards renewable, and I welcome this. I would, my criticism is not going fast enough, but it's just not accurate to say that we're, 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 uh, we're, we're going backwards. And actually, living in cities, your question was about cities and population, is, is more environmentally friendly. Mm. Uh, actually, denser populations living in cities is better for the environment uh, they have been spread out uh, in rural parts of the country. Well, it's sustainability, because with an increase in population, we'll need more energy. But I'll, I'll move on. But to ask you another thing, I mean, in you, one of the things that you, you will need to do is increase the, uh, the capacity of the rail network and the underground network, etc. But there's recently been problems with uh, the Northern and Jubilee line, uh, the trains which were going to be ordered are, are not going to come uh, at, in, on time. And uh, we hear from TfL that Crossrail 2 might be delayed by 10 years. Is that going to have an effect uh, on the ability of Londoners to move around if there's such a, a huge population growth? And what are you going to do uh, about those two issues? So our current population is 8.8 .8 million. Uh, and you talked about different figures, 2050. We can go even sooner than that. 8.8 .8 now. 9 million in 2020, 10 million in 2030. And that's one of the reasons why the draft transport strategy set out a plan to get more people walking, uh, more people cycling, more people using public transport. And one of the things we're doing is increasing public transport capacity. That's why, for example, the Elizabeth Line opening next year and the year after, part of it opens December 2018, part of it 2019, will increase public transport capacity by more than 10%. It goes to the east and to the west, 40 new stations from east to west, will increase transport capacity. Uh, Will Norman, the Walking and Cycling Commissioner, is encouraging more people to walk and uh, uh, cycle. The reason uh, why, we, why, why we, uh, the Jubilee and Northern Line uh, timelines for the trains was because the trains we have uh, have increased efficiency. We've improved signalling. We've got Northern Line extension to uh, South London in, in Batsy. Uh, we've got the Elizabeth Line starting in 2018. So that means the need for the Jubilee Line uh, additional trains is less because people will dive from Jubilee Line to uh, Elizabeth Line. But we should welcome the engineering advances made, this, the advances made elsewhere, which means rather than having to buy a train on a certain day, we can delay the need to buy the train until a future day, which saves us money. You wouldn't buy a new car when your current car is working really well. Why should we spend money on a new train when the current trains are, because of increased engineering, are working well? All right, thank you, Mr. Mayor.